Namaste and hello everyone. We are delighted to be presenting Building Bridges Across Time and Space, discussing multiple approaches towards experimental archaeology at our institute. I am Shanti Papu. I am Kumar Akhiles and we are from the Sarma Center for Heritage Education in India. Today, we discuss ways in which we have adopted experimental archaeology encompassing three interlinked worlds. The first is the world of research, where experiments in lithic napping are essential for investigating hominid behavior at prehistoric sites we are excavating and researching. The second is pedagogy, linked to the worlds of university postgraduate, doctoral students, postdocs, early career researchers and faculty who experiment with lithic napping and tool use in courses on South Asian prehistory organized at our institute. The third is the world of children, college students, teachers and the community. Hands-on activities and experimentation are built into our public outreach programs where we seek to bridge the gaps between academia, scientists and the wider community. So let's take a short look first at experimental archaeology in Indian prehistory. India has numerous prehistoric sites, the earliest of which date to around 1 to 1.7 million years. Our primary evidence for investigating hominin behavior at these sites comes from rich and diverse assemblages of stone artifacts. It's also fascinating to note that the first Paleolithic stone tool was discovered in India in 1863 by Robert Bruce Foote in the very region where we are now working, shortly after major discoveries established prehistory in Europe and England. Perceptive observations by Foote and his colleague William King on how tools were made and used, on site formation studies and other factors drew on geology, archaeology and a wealth of ethnographic observations. Elsewhere, casual napping experiments were also conducted. As prehistory developed in independent India, H.D. Sankalya, a leading pioneer in this field, along with his colleagues, began experimental lithic napping and tool use. The aim was to interpret stone tool typology and technology at the numerous newly discovered sites, thereby laying the foundations for prehistoric archaeology in India. Since then, studies, although sporadic, have focused on experimental napping, some of which include microwave, and explore technological strategies ranging from the Acheulean onwards. Some debates also concern processes occurring as part of traditional stone bead manufacturing techniques. Despite fascinating research drawing on ethnographic analogies, there are no living traditions of stone tool manufacture in India. It is here that experimental lithic napping and functional studies assumes great importance for understanding Indian prehistoric assemblages. So let's zoom down to our own research that began in the 1990s into the prehistoric archaeology of this region of Southeast India. Experimental archaeology is a key aspect in our research for investigating reduction sequences and interpreting hominid behavior at the prehistoric sites we are excavating, such as Atrampakam and others. We began with determining raw material sources and decisions made whilst selecting suitable cobbles and boulders amongst the infinite sources of quartzite clasts available. With strict experimental protocols and detailed recording, we replicated different ways in which cores were reduced to detach large flakes that were preferred by Acheulean hominids for biface manufacture. We replicated different strategies used for hand axe façonnage at Atrampakam deconstructing patterns of flake detachment. This also aided in interpreting the significant component of waste flakes, as also other variables such as cere breaks that reflect different aspects of hominin skill and decision making. We didn't focus our napping to get symmetrical or beautiful hand axes, but to replicate the modes of hand axe flaking seen specifically in the assemblages we are investigating. Interesting studies are ongoing on the use of different raw materials and hard and soft hammers. We are currently looking at techniques for making cleavers at Atrampakam from the simplest cortical ones to
to those made by the more sophisticated kombeva or other methods. The development of Levalua technologies as also the origins of early blade technologies involved a series of napping experiments with a focus shifting to fine-grained quartzites and siliceous raw materials. Is research alone enough? Right from the early stages of our work, we began by thinking about bringing the past alive for the community in ways that were both accurate and yet innovative, to shift between research and outreach, connecting people of the present with those of the past. Experimental archaeology is a key component in this science outreach, ranging from aspects of craft traditions and material culture to specific themes related to past cultures. Here, extinct practices like lithic napping and the wonderful living traditions of India are woven into our pedagogy. We reach out to children from diverse communities, age groups and socio-economic contexts conducting programs in several languages. Our aim has been to create, connect and communicate. The simple premise is that educating children is the only sustainable way to ensure awareness of the past and future conservation. This is of crucial importance as awareness of archaeological sites, in particular prehistoric ones, is limited in India. From a small beginning in one room at the Mrs. Ellen Sharma Memorial School, Chennai, India, we are now expanding and developing displays and workshops that enhance interactivity through structured creative modules. Experimentation is key here in the complete sense of the word in terms of both hands-on activities and finding solutions to problems that could have been faced in the past. We work at designing new modules, structuring pre-visit communication with teachers, introductory sessions, field and lab components and hands-on experiments on different themes, followed by discussions and post-visit surveys that help us improve our module structures. We begin with an introduction with audiovisual aids, handling of objects and experimental demonstrations to introduce the theme for the day, a full sensory experience. In a typical module, we seek to explore how archaeologists work. For example, children are taken through surveying and learning about maps and all our programs have a component of excavations with carefully planned mock trenches through which they are taken through the process of learning how archaeologists carefully excavate, sieve, document and discuss what they find. This is a crucial aspect of understanding prior to beginning our experimental modules. On-site field visits to our excavations bring alive concepts through observation and activities. And it's a lot of fun. One of the key aspects of our program is experimentation, as we've said before. Here you can see Akhilesh teaching children napping following all due safety protocols. Children choose rocks and experiment with forces and angles to detach flakes. They use these on different materials and gain an understanding of the complexity of early stone technologies and a little insight into prehistoric mines. Components of geology may be built in where children learn about rocks and minerals, build their own volcanoes and study the geology of India. In other modules, children experiment with making their own colours and brushes in a natural setting, learn styles of rock art through time, build their own stories and think about the nature of prehistoric art. From ideas to implementation, using brushes, fingers and sprays, we explore the minds of ancient artists. A great way to study ancient farmers is to begin by cultivating your own crops, tilling the land, planting seeds and returning later to harvest them with traditional tools. With the living tradition of grinding stone usage in India, the past merges with the present as we explore domestication of plants and animals, early food processing and diverse Neolithic ways of life. Feeling clay beneath your hands, Interacting and learning from skilled craftspersons. Moving between shapes, past and present, lends greater meaning to the ancient craft of pottery in India. From handmade to wheel-made pots, firing, 
slips, incised decorations and painting, children are exposed to a range of techniques and forms that characterize living and ancient ceramic traditions. Moving on in time to the Indus Valley civilization, we built cities brick by brick, exploring both material culture and processes of the growth and decline of this culture. Built into modules are aspects of teamwork and cooperation, so essential for the present as in the past. We move on to living traditions of the lost wax method of metal casting. Wax comes alive in small hands, giving shape to ideas and dreams. Sealed in clay molds destined to melt, the wax gives way to glowing metals flowing into magnificent shapes. Looking at the ancient Indus Valley figurines or Chola bronzes will never be the same again. Monuments acquire new meaning when you learn to build them yourself and experiment with ancient architecture. Working towards creating a holistic idea of ancient environments, we experiment with how fossils were formed in the past and experts reconstruct the world of ancient plants and animals. Each module ends with discussion and feedback ensuring constant updates. These workshops are often in collaboration with other scientists and institutes across the world. Now, let's move on to the third component of our experimental archaeology programs for university students and faculty, forming an intrinsic part of our courses on South Asian prehistory. A strong focus here lies on experiments, without which lithic studies remain abstract concepts in the minds of students. Modules have the following components. We begin with a background to the concept for the day, an introduction that also includes observation and handling of artifacts, as also a game or a quick quiz and interactive session. This is followed by several hours of napping to gain a practical understanding of concepts discussed. This begins with an interactive demonstration by Akhilesh, where students observe and discuss the basic concept for the day. Participants then experiment themselves under the guidance of Akhilesh. This includes making decisions as regards selection of raw material and blanks, modes of detachment of large flakes, for example, and subsequent napping to achieve the final product. At every stage, students record and make observations on the cores, flakes and waste and the processes involved. This method of personalized and group-based teaching enables students to observe, imitate and practice until they achieve some degree of competence in the goal for the day. We have also now a great idea of processes involved in teaching and learning, at least for modern humans. From tool manufacture, we move on to experimental tool use with macroscopic and sometimes microscopic observations. Through this process, we seek to incorporate experimentation as an integral part of teaching prehistory in India. From across India to Sri Lanka and South Korea, we have attempted to reach out through exhibitions and traveling modules, again with experimentation forming a core component. Short courses, workshops, demonstrations and exhibitions. Whatever the format, we always include at some level lithic napping to convey concepts to people across the nation. With the COVID-19 pandemic, we have moved online through our Down Ancient Trails virtual forum reaching out with lectures and now moving on to virtual workshops for all age groups. As we move forward, we seek to expand our networks in the fascinating field of experimental archaeology in India, drawing together a wider global community for research, teaching and public outreach. The future of experimental archaeology is one full of potential in India and we look forward to an exciting future of building bridges once again across time and space. Thank you.